Everyone ready? So let me begin my comments uh, by stating that uh, instead of the legislature and the governor uh, preempting cities and counties, they should be calling us all up and saying thank you to cities and counties. Uh, because what could have happened in the state of Florida, as far as the number of hospitalizations and the number of deaths, didn't happen because of the actions that cities and counties took that this legislation directly addresses and, and would in vast large part prohibit us from doing. So I'm going to walk you guys through this a little bit and I want to encourage everybody, not just uh, reporters but the public, pull up the bill and read through it and see what it actually says. The first thing though that I thought was very interesting is when you start looking at uh, where it talks about the intent of the legislature, uh, they don't hesitate to talk about the intent uh, on the economy, but nowhere in the list of intent uh, in legislative findings do they talk about the intent to minimize the negative effects to health and safety of communities caused by public health emergencies. To me, that's a pretty notable uh, exclusion that's not in this document. They're more interested in um, the powers of the legislature and the governor uh, and in businesses and keeping them open than they are in the health and safety of our public. Then as you start scrolling through, and there's a lot of things that are in this bill, uh, but I'm just going to call your, your attention to, a, to several pieces of it. The legislature had no issue in giving the governor authority to enter an executive order proclamation or rule that is in existence for 60 days, no more than 60, but may be renewed as necessary. But when it comes to cities and counties, it's seven days and no more than 42 total. So think about when COVID started and the first orders of cities like St. Petersburg went into effect. And then think that was roughly, let's say, April. So by the middle of May, under this bill that was signed by the governor, uh, the order of the city and the county would have been over. We could not renew it under any right. Uh, and it was only good for seven days and then city council or county commission would have to renew it and authorize its renewal. So think about the unintended consequences that come with that. Aside from COVID, let's say we have a hurricane and our bridges are washed out and I put an executive order in place, an emergency order. Seven days later, somehow I got to try and get my council back together in order to extend that emergency order. Otherwise, that emergency order is over. It goes away. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but he specifically said it does not, in, it's an outside of hurricane. He said that. Outside of hurricane, this is in place. Well, uh, you know, I would encourage the governor to review the order uh, to see what it says here. I'm going to turn to that page. Uh, an emergency order automatically expires seven days after issuance. This is uh, in section. Uh, section four. Okay, so he's saying it's only only relates to health care. So I guess it 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 it's not important uh, if you've got several. Let's say you have several council members who have COVID, who have tested positive. How do I get a quorum? How do I extend my emergency order if they're positive, they're quarantining, or they're in the hospital? What do I do? So even if he's right and it doesn't, and I just read this before we came here. But even if he's right and it doesn't, how do you deal with that situation? What, what are we supposed to do then? How do I have an order in place? The order also I thought was, was interesting is, you know, in the state of Florida, when you're a school, uh, and I'll use schools as an example, elementary school through high school, diphtheria, tetanus, H -B, uh, hep B, measles, mumps, rubella, polio, chicken pox, for high schools, HPV, meningitis, those are all vaccinations you have to get. And they're required if you're gonna send your kid to school or high school or college. But now in Florida, COVID-19's vaccination isn't included. You, can't, you cannot require that. So we have to ask the governor and the legislature, what's the difference? Why is it required uh, for all these other vaccinations? And that's okay but it's not okay to ask and require a COVID-19 vaccination. And what it comes down to is it comes down to politics. 
And unfortunately, this administration and this legislature has applied politics to health care in the state of Florida. Uh, and who loses when that happens? All the residents of the state of Florida, almost 20 million or 22 million or whatever number we're at now. Those are the ones who are losing, uh, you know, by this. So uh, this act, this isn't for the protection of Floridians. This is for politics. Uh, and that's not what it's supposed to be. Yes. So one question that I asked the governor this mm -hmm. morning, and I'd like to ask you, our city council members, our county commissioners are elected. Mm -hmm. And by putting something like this in place that does allow some checks and balances in the state legislature and the governor, it also gives the governor power to overturn localities. So yes. Yeah, well, the, the legislature is not shy about hypocrisy. Uh, and, you know, you listen to them, and if you listen to her in session, you'll, you'll often hear them complain about Washington. Washington shouldn't tell us what to do. We know our state better than Washington. Well, the legislature shouldn't tell local government what to do. We know our cities and our counties better than they do. Uh, and so that's what you frequently will hear. You know, the governor uh, is, there's a lot of language in this that basically gives him total power. And you're right. So we can have an order in place. If the governor doesn't think it's an appropriate order, he can just say, that's it. Your order's dead. And so what is he basing that on? There's no requirement that it has to be founded on science, especially when it comes to COVID. It's founded on whatever the governor feels, just like there are provisions in here that even regulate him, but they give him the flexibility where it says that, uh, you know, his executive order should to the greatest extent, and I'll use, the, I'll read the one about schools. There's a presumption that schools should be remain open as long as health and safety uh, of students can be maintained uh, by specific public health mitigation strategies recommended by federal, or that's the big word here, or state health agencies. Now, who do state health agencies work for? They work for the governor. So. The governor can control the state health agency if he wants businesses open, because that same provision applies to businesses. The state health agency can say, no, it's fine. And he can rely on that. And he can keep his, uh, he can put orders in place. Mayor, do you feel like you have to check with the governor now before you issue emergency? Well, certainly uh, that seems to be the way this that they're trying to do things here. I mean, there's, there's a provision related to uh, if we receive state money for um, for emergency services that says we have to submit to the state within uh, prior, actually prior to expending funds, what our plan is for how we're going to expend funds. Uh, now, if it's a real emergency and we, we don't have time to do that, they do give us that exception. But again, it's all about control here. And it's about the state trying to wrestle control and take control away from local government, from the the people who are closest to the people who elected them to make the decisions about what's best for our community. Are there any chances for you to challenge legally? I, I think legally this will be challenged. Look, I, I spent six years in the legislature. I can remember standing on the floor of the House holding up a first DCA court opinion and that said that the action the legislature was about to take, which previously they had tried to take before and was challenged and was found unconstitutional, I'd say, this case says what you're doing is unconstitutional. And I actually had a legislator say, well, that's just one, one court's opinion. Well, that was an appellate court's opinion. It carries weight. Um, so they don't seem to really care about constitutionality. 